Well, it seems like Lauren Boebert may have actually screwed herself by switching districts. So she currently represents Colorado's third congressional district, which is more of a swing district, and she only won it by 546 votes in 2022. But after Republican Ken Buck in CD4, the next district over, announced that he'd be retiring, she decided to abandon her old district that she nearly lost in 2022 and run in Ken Buck's, since it's a more solidly Republican district and thus a safer seat. The problem is that she now has to compete in a GOP primary and the earliest gauge that we have of that race indicates that Republicans in the new district she's trying to run in aren't actually a very big fan of her. Kelly Risman of The Independent reports, Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert finished in fifth place according to a straw poll, a devastating showing after the Republicans switched to run in a new district. Last week, Ms. Boebert competed against eight other Republicans in a congressional primary debate in Fort Lupton, Colorado in which she garnered just 10% of the straw poll vote, landing in fifth place, according to Colorado politics. Ms. Boebert earned 12 out of the 117 votes cast in the straw poll, the outlet reported. Damn. Now, there's a couple of caveats, okay? First and foremost, obviously, this is very early, and the sample size is super small, so it's not representative of the entire district. But having said that, though, this is still disastrous because we're talking about an incumbent Republican with national name recognition who was aligned with Donald Trump, the cult leader of the Republican Party. So it shouldn't have even been close. It should have been a blowout. But GOP voters in this district, they're like, mm, we have Lauren Boebert and a bunch of other people. We're going to opt for the no name Republicans over her. That is so wild to me. And to make matters worse, all of the local headlines in Colorado are talking about her fifth place finish because this really isn't something that a lot of people expected. For example, here's one headline from Colorado politics, quote, Lauren Boebert finishes in the middle of the pack in straw poll at inaugural GOP primary debate. And they go on to explain who's ahead of her, quote, out of 117 votes cast, Logan County Commissioner Jerry Sonnenberg, a former longtime state lawmaker, led the straw poll with 22 votes, followed by former House Minority Leader Mike Lynch of Wellington, who received 20 votes, Douglas County filmmaker Deborah Flora at 18 votes, and House Minority Whip Richard Holtorf of Akron with 17 votes. Bobert got 12 votes, narrowly edging out former congressional nominee Peter Hughes 11 votes with three more candidates. So I find this incredible incredibly hilarious, obviously, because rather than going with MAGA superstar Lauren Boebert, Republicans at this debate chose to go with some obscure ass county commissioner. That has got to hurt if you're Lauren Boebert. And it's not just that Republicans seemingly weren't impressed by her. She actually faced some hostility at this forum. Colorado Newsline reports, as expected, Boebert faced sharp questions about her decision to move into a new congressional district to escape a rematch with Frisch. Quote, could you give the definition of carpetbagger? Lynch asked Boebert. Flora also asked a similar version of the question and referenced Boebert's criticism of a Democratic opponent from the 2022 cycle who lived outside of the third congressional district post redistricting. That's some hypocrisy burning right there. Boebert said she is proud to be Weld County's newest resident resident. Quote, my boys and I needed a fresh start. That's been very public of what home life looked like, she said. Boebert is newly divorced and her ex-husband was recently arrested for alleged domestic violence incidents involving her and her son. Quote, I tried to put it into a very pretty package and bring my ex-husband lots of honor, but since there's nothing private about my personal life, it is out there and my boys need some freedom from what has been going on, she said. But in a telling moment, no other candidate said they would support Boebert in the primary if they were not running. Four people said they would support Sonnenberg. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Now, to make matters worse, she was seemingly humble bragging at the start of the forum, and she said something to the effect of, look, I'm here to earn your vote. I'm here to earn your support. This is not going to be a coronation. And I find that really funny because you probably wouldn't say something like that unless you wanted to make your opponents who you thought you would beat feel better because voters would overwhelmingly side with you. But I mean, that's not the case. So it's, it's funny to me that she said that. And if you'll notice, she wasn't able to define carpetbagger. And using her ex-husband as an excuse to switch districts is so bizarre to me. Yes, he was arrested for alleged domestic violence, so she has my sympathy there. That's not her fault. However, it feels gross to use that as a justification to switch districts because 
we all know that you switched districts specifically because if you stayed in District 3, you would have lost to the Democrat. So you can still get a fresh start by moving somewhere else in your old district. It's a very large district. But I mean, she's not doing that. She's using that as an excuse, which is so weird to me. But I mean, this is Lauren Boebert we're talking about here. So she's not running to actually serve her constituents. Everything is about her. And she's kind of gotten a big head since being in Congress. And uh, maybe that arrogance is coming back to bite her in the ass. It's already starting to at least. But I mean, you can't blame her for being cocky when there are people who say things like this about her. So Reddit user CrunchM shared this mind boggling tweet on the white people Twitter subreddit. And it almost made my head explode. So it's from Scott Greer, who lists his height and IQ in in, in his Twitter handle. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily scream confidence to me, even though that's what he's trying to project. But my only question is, OK, but what about your location and social security number? List that in your bio or in your Twitter handle. And I'm going to definitely think you're confident. But anyways, he says to those who might say the right needs its own Taylor Swift for young women to look up to. Nobody's saying that, but whatever. I answer, we already have that. Her name is Lauren Boebert. Needless to say, I don't agree with Scott Greer, six foot two IQ of 187. It's just, can we, can we maybe go back to the time where we view politicians just as politicians and not as celebrities? God, American politics, such a mess right now. And for those wondering, no, he's not trolling. This is an actual right winger who has this opinion, unironically. Now, it's just shocking that anyone would view Lauren Boebert as a role model. I mean, even if you're trying to find specifically Republican women to be role models, there are better ones than Lauren Boebert because Lauren Boebert isn't a good role model given the fact that she uh, likes to publicly shame victims of rape. She wrote this on Twitter recently, an $83 million judgment given to a woman who can't even tell you the date or time she encountered President Trump. The precedent this sets for men in this country is absolute terrifying. It is truly unbelievable how weaponized our system of quote justice has become. I'm sorry, but does that seem like a wonderful role model for young women? She is attacking E. Jean Carroll at the behest of her rapist who defamed her, Donald Trump. What a real champion for women. If that is who you view as a role model for the GOP, then I guess that explains why the party is in the shape that it's in. But I mean, you kind of see why she's extremely arrogant, right? She's immersed in MAGA world. She's kind of become a superstar like Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she's part of the club. And when you're on top of the world, you probably feel like nothing can bring you down, which makes it all the more painful when you inevitably get reality checked and then realize, hmm, I'm not as infallible as I thought. But on the subject of role models, Chris Perez of Denver Westward shared a video from the candidate forum she participated in and says, quote, incredible moment in first GOP debate for CD4 as candidates are asked to raise their hands if they've been arrested. Six candidates raised their hands, including Lauren Boebert and Mike Lynch. They then proceeded to cheer and high five each other. So here's a quick clip of that moment. I love how she said it a second time to get more laughs, but they only thought it was kind of funny the first time. Embarrassing. Now, listen, I thought that this was supposed to be the party of law and order, the party who is against felons voting because that's what they're trying to do around the country. But all of a sudden, having an arrest record is something to be proud of. And when it comes to Donald Trump, if he's convicted on any of his 91 charges, they all probably think that it's perfectly fine for him to be president, even though normal people lose their right to just vote if they're a felon, if they're convicted of a crime. Right. So it's just it's so hypocritical to see them all laugh about this after they've been on this whole tough on crime shtick for decades now. And I wouldn't be as annoyed if they actually supported restorative justice and thought that felons should be allowed to vote. But the problem is they don't. So it's elitist because it comes across as, well, you know, when we do crimes, it's fine. But when poor people do crimes, they should lose everything, their right to vote. But when we do it, we can still run for president. We can still run for public office. It's just very uh, gross. So, I mean, even if Lauren Boebert loses, CD4 very clearly is still going to go with some ghoulish Republican who's as bad as Bobo, if not worse. But with that being said, do I still hope that she loses? 
Yes, because I think it would be hilarious and possibly the biggest self-own in the history of American politics if she literally lost her election after switching districts specifically because she thought that she would have an easier time getting reelected. If that happened, oh, it'd be it'd be amazing. Like you can't beat that. So I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping that the universe delivers.